It's encouraging to encourage our mothers. Amen. I love this holiday. I have a mom. I married to a mom. And I actually made a mom, right? Because if not for me, Don wouldn't be a mother right now, right? (laughs) So, anyway, it's it's great to have so many moms here today. You know, Don and I, we've been married now this June 20 years. Don's been a mom 17 of those. And uh, as the scriptures tell us, the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives blessing from the Lord. And we and my family, we're so blessed. We have a really good thing. And we've been really blessed by Don's love, by her just immense heart for God and people. And it's amazing. This lady ages, but she, her beauty doesn't change. And uh, I don't know how she does that. But she's amazingly cool all these years down the road and super adventurous. And so I have a few flowers, so I'm going to give her some flowers. Oh. And, and a kiss. Is that okay in church on Sunday? I think it's okay. Thank you. All right. She is the sunshine in our family, so hence the yellow flowers. Hey, I also have a few door prizes for moms today, too. All right, so listen up. We got Amazon gift cards. We're giving away to a few people. Millions of items. You can buy whatever you need, just what you're looking for. So looking for the mom with the most kids. How many have two kids or more? That's a bunch of us. Three kids or more. Four kids or more. Five kids or more. Six kids are... Wait, did I lose somebody at six? What? Six. So anybody else six other than Michelle? Five. Okay, I'm sorry. I was counting. I'm like, did you just adopt? I'm like, where'd you get the other child? You want this prize. I understand. It's... Six, John had, yeah, but it's not Father's Day, dude. You got to wait till next month. So we got five. Okay, of those who have five, who has the birthday closest to today? That'll be our tiebreaker. Nia, how close is your birthday? May 6th, five days ago. All right, she's got the first one there. Nia Mathis, awesome. All right, who, which mom is visiting from furthest away? Somebody outside of Denver. Houston. Houston. Okay, we have a mom from Houston. Anybody further? Oh, South Carolina's further. We don't even need to Google that. (laughs) South Carolina. Anybody beat South Carolina? Oh, stop. You stop. It may not be further away, depending on where in Mexico. All right, South Carolina in the back. Happy Mother's Day. All right, who is the mom that has the oldest child? This might be a grandmom today, but the mom with the oldest child. Anybody with a 40-year-old child? We got, do we got a couple with 40-year-old? How about a 45-year-old child? Raise your hands nice and high. I can't see. 50-year-old child. We're still going right here. A couple. We got a few. 55-year-old child. Still going. 60-year-old child. Still going. Anybody? I got one. I got two. 61-year-old child. 62. 63. 63. Is that Joyce? Anybody else? 63-year-old child. I just don't want to miss anybody. I think it's Joyce. Joyce, congratulations. All right, and last one, the mom with the youngest child. They're probably in that in the room over there with their child. But who's got the youngest child? How young? Abby, four months. Anybody shorter than that? Two months. Anybody less than two? Everybody's like, oh, where's the baby? Bring the baby up. Two months, going once, going twice. Two months is the youngest today. (laughs) 
All right. Well done. Well done. You know, I, I thought about my mom today, and I considered some things that my mom taught me. Here are a few actual things my mom taught me. She taught me about work ethic, and what she taught me about work ethic was do it right the first time. Repeated that so many times growing up to me. My mom also taught me about logic. Because I said so, that's why. <laughs> Another one, mom taught me about foresight. She said this all the time I went out of the house. Wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. No holes. She taught me about medical science. She said, if you don't stop crossing your eyes, they will stay that way, right? I mean, my mom knows so much. And she taught me a lot about religion. When she said things like, you better pray that comes out of the carpet. <laughs> well, we want to honor moms today, and you have a handout. There's uh, some goodies on the back side just for the rest of this week. But we're going to focus on the front side that has the pretty happy Mother's Day picture We're going to roll through this today and uh, honor our moms. You can kind of follow along. Moms, it just got the new pens. You can actually use your new pen uh, to write in some of the blanks here. Ooh, all right. So Ephesians uh, 6, right there in the beginning of, of your handout, also on the screen. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of the Ten Commandments that ends with a promise. And this is the promise. If you honor your father and mother, you will live a long life full of blessing. And as we probably most of us know, not all the Ten Commandments have a promise, but this one does. And the promise specifically here is if you do honor your father and mother, you will live a long life full of blessing. Maybe even circle blessing there. This full of blessing. That's what will happen when we honor our father and mother. Now you may wonder, well, why in the world did God give this command? I mean, out of all the commands that he gave, and, and to make it into the top 10 commands and things that God would want to impart to us, how this honoring your father and mother make it in there? Well, I think it made it in there because it's so important. And here's three reasons why I think it's important. You can write these in here. Number one, every parent is flawed. Every parent is flawed. Your parents are flawed. Their parents are flawed. If you're a parent, you're flawed. And if, you have, if your kids have kids, they're going to be flawed as parents too. There are no perfect parents. And so God in his foresight knew that and just said, I'm going to have to tell you to honor your parents because you're going to be tempted not to because they have certain flaws. All right? Even Jesus' mom uh, wasn't the perfect parent. I mean, she lost him. I mean, if you have like ch- multiple children and Jesus is one of them, you think you would at least keep your eyes on him. <laughs> just saying right? Number two, number two reason here is you wouldn't be alive without your parents. Therefore, honor. I mean, I know that's kind of duh, right? But God chose them, your parents, to be the tools to bring you into the world, to create you. Whether or not uh, your parent was good or bad or indifferent, that's irrelevant. God used them to make you, which brings us to the third point. God chose their DNA to make you uniquely you. God chose their DNA to make you uniquely you. Okay, some teen or college student, DNA, what's the real, what's the full name for DNA? Okay, yeah, deoxyribonucleic acid. Woohoo! You wanted to learn that today. There you go. All right, so so how did he do that? Well, it tells us how he, he put all this together. Psalm 139, verse 13, God knit us together, my mother's womb, and recorded every day of our lives before we were born. In other words, God was there at the point of your conception, my conception, and he was intimately involved in developing our body, our mind, our personality while we were still inside our mom. And then he laid out this plan for what was going to happen in our future. You know, God has a plan for every day of our lives here, even before we were born. And it's one of the reasons that, that, that abortion short-circuits the will of God. It's because that was a person, and that person was somebody who God had a plan for their whole life before they were even born, right? But let me also say this, that when you were born, you weren't an accident. You know, you've heard about parents accidentally, people becoming accidental parents, like, oop, <laughs> we weren't even trying, and ah, what do you know? Hey, we became a parent. You know, they're, they're accidental parents, but there are no accidental babies, 
right? There are Ill illegitimate parents, right? But there are no illegitimate babies. Because even though we may not have done it right or hadn't planned it or, what, you know, in a way that, that, you know, that may not have happened, but God did. God absolutely planned it and knit you and put you together. So some of us may say from time to time, you know, well, why did God give me my parents, right? Why did he give these parents that he gave me? Well, I'll tell you why. Not only because he, we, it was their DNA that made you uniquely you, made you the individual you are, um, but if you had any other parents, you wouldn't be you. That's why he gave you the parents you have. You know, and, and in doing so, God was more interested in creating you than he was in their parenting skills. Again, this is just saying, you know, you may have good parents, bad parents, terrible parents, even have absentee parents. You may have had parents that even have hurt you. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But the bottom line is you couldn't have existed, even been here without their DNA. And God allowed all that to happen because he had a plan, because he was much more interested in you as a person than he was in the parents' parenting skills. Now, here's another duh statement. Clearly, we're not all moms. There's some people that I'm not a mom, right, you know. But there's some people here who want to be moms, and it hasn't happened. There's some that want to be moms, and the circumstances haven't allowed it. We're not all moms, but we all have had moms, right? And the Bible tells us that we need to honor our mothers and honor our fathers. You know, there's so many people, moms, that we could honor today because there's so many types of moms, right? We have biological moms. We have stepmoms. We have the single moms. We have the adoptive moms. We have those who are foster moms. We have those who are just spiritual moms, mentor moms. There, there are a lot of moms. And what I want to do in just the brief time that we have here together today is honor all kinds of those moms. You know, I'm reminded of a minister who asked his wife, do you have any suggestions for a Mother's Day message? And his, his lovely wife, and they had children, his lovely wife and the mother of his children said, yes, honey, I have three. Be sincere, be short, and be seated. <laughs> so in conclusion, I would like to wrap up my Mother's Day message now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, just for a moment, a few moments here, I, I, I want us to, to think about how can I honor mom for the rest of my life? At each stage that we're in, and we're going to look at the various stages, but whatever stage we're in, how can I honor mom for the rest of my life? So what I want us to look at here, I kind of broke it down into three different stages of life that we can honor our moms, and how do you do that at each stage? Well, first talk about a child. It says here in the, in, on the screen, as a child, I honor my father and mother by doing what? By obeying them, right? I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it's what the Bible says. I honor my father and mother by obeying them. That means I, I do what they ask. It means that I follow instructions. It means I mind directions, and I do it willingly, right? Cheerfully. I do it immediately, all of that honors God because we're honoring our parents in doing that. Um, Ephesians 6.1 says, Children, obey your parents. This is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. Even on your handout, you can just circle that word authority because one of the most important life skills that we can learn uh, in, in life and if you, is this idea of being under authority. And if you don't get that, your life is going to be pretty miserable. It's not going to be that successful. If we don't learn how to respond to and relate to authority. And so one of the things God said, hey, I want you as you're teaching your children, they're growing up, that they need to respond to and respect authority. Now, there, there's a difference between the person and the position. The person in authority may be a jerk. You probably have some people in authority in your life right now that they're kind of a jerk. But you're to honor their position and honor the authority that is there. Basically, in the Bible, there are three main authorities that God has ordained in our lives. The first authority is the home, what we're looking at. The second authority, there's authority in the church. And then there's authority in government, right? And they, just, they all have different spheres of influence and different responsibilities in our life. But for a child who kind of grows up thinking, nobody's ever going to tell me what to do, they're not going to hold a job down for very long, Right? Because as you learn very quickly, there's a lot of times you have to do things you do not want to do. Because somebody in authority, a boss, a, a teacher, uh, your employer, whatever, is asking you to do it. And you're like, hey, 
They're, they have the first. I just, I need to do that. And so as a child, we honor mom and dad by obeying them. But what happens when we become a little bit older, teenagers, right? You know, this young adult stage. Well, there are a couple ways that we honor our parents when we enter this stage. The first is, as you can see there, you can write that in, by respecting them. By respecting them. Let's look at a couple scriptures. Leviticus 19.3. Each of you must respect his mother and father. Respect. In Hebrews 12.9. We respect our own parents for training us and not spoiling us. Here's kind of an interesting thing about respect. Respect doesn't mean you don't see their weaknesses. If you're a young adult today, hear that. Respect doesn't mean you don't see their weaknesses. In fact, as you grow older, as, as a young adult, as a teenager, as a young adult, it often becomes very, very, very obvious that your parents are flawed human beings. In fact, as a teenager, that's usually all you see in your parents are their flaws, right? But, but God says, in spite of their flaws, I want you to respect them. And what that means is, is that you do two things. You accept them and you forgive them. Accepting and forgiving is a part of honoring and respecting our parents. Accepting your parents, that means the good and the bad, and, and just realizing, hey, God gave them to me, and they're my parents, and I'm going to accept them. And you're going to say, wait, 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 wait. Why do I have to accept my parents? I didn't have a choice in who my parents were. Well, think about this. Neither did they. Unless you were adopted, then maybe you're one of the few special ones that, you know, were actually chosen to be the child, and you get some special privileges even in that regard biblically. But if you were just born, they didn't get a chance or a choice of what they were getting either. Think about that. So you accept them, but respect also means forgiving them. You know, as, as young adults, as teens, we need to forgive our parents, forgive their weaknesses, forgive their faults, forgive their hypocrisy at times, forgive their, their, their outbursts at times, forgive, because you're going to need forgiveness in your life too. So we honor our parents as we grow into adulthood by respecting them. We don't diss them. We don't disrespect them with the rolled eyes or the attitude. We don't talk to them disrespectfully. We honor them the way, even by the way we talk because they're our mother and father. The second way that we honor our parents is we honor them by listening to them. Listening. The Bible says a whole lot. We could do a whole sermon just about listening and the value of listening to our parents. Proverbs 13.1. Kids, you want to be smart? This is it. Intelligent children. Intelligent children. Listen to their parents. Foolish children do their own thing. You know, as you grow into young adulthood, kind of when you, at some point when you get out there on your own, we have graduates, they're going to be sort of leaving the nest, kind of getting out there on their own. And uh, at that point, when you're kind of out of the home, you're no longer necessarily bound to follow your parents' advice once you're out there on your own, right? But you are bound to listen to them respectfully. There will never be a time in your life where you can be disrespectful of your parents. Even if they're not living the kind of life that you would have them live. You can't do it. You know, being in the ministry, I've done a lot of family and marriage counseling over the years. And one thing that I've observed, even parents that are in crisis, even parents who, quite honestly, as parents are kind of a disaster as parents, are often on the spot about what their kids need. They may not be doing it themselves, but they kind of know what their kid, like, this would be good if you did this, and they can kind of speak, speak into that, right? You know, it's been said that even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> so, so just because your parent or dad or mom didn't have it all together doesn't mean they don't have the occasional bit of good input and advice and wisdom that you might need to listen to. You might say, well, mom, I'll listen to you when you get it all together. I'll take your advice. But you know that's never going to happen because nobody ever gets it all together. Proverbs 23, verse 22 says, listen to your father's advice and don't despise your mother's experience. You know, God gave me, God gave us, our parents, for a purpose. He had this intended purpose to help us become the person that we and he want us to be. 
And, and, and so I know at times we kind of think, well, what should I listen? Why should I listen even to what my parents are saying or what they're teaching us, what they're telling us? Because it prepares us for life. Consider Proverbs 6, verse 20. Do what your father tells you and never forget what your mother teaches you. Keep their words with you always, locked in your heart. Their instructions will lead you, protect you, and advise you. Their instructions are like a lamp. Their con- corrections can teach you how to live. So we learn how to live by listening to our parents. As a young adult, we honor our parents by respecting them, not treating them with disrespect, and by listening to them. So those are kind of the first two stages of life, just kind of quickly hitting those two stages in, in some ways that we can really honor our parents and honor our moms. But many of us here today aren't in either of those categories anymore. We're in another category. We're grown adults now, right? Woo-hoo! Um, so what does the Bible have to say for us? You know, what would the Bible tell us in our adult, adult relationships with our parents, particularly as they get older and in particular as they, as, as they age? Well, the Bible has some very important things to say about that. As an adult, I honor my parents first by appreciating them. Appreciating them. Proverbs 23, 22 says this, When your mother is old, show her appreciation. Show her your appreciation. Just circle that, you know. Well, what should I appreciate about my parents? Well, I mean, literally, right? I mean, there's like thousands of things, right? You know, especially as our minds have been thinking about it, today's Mother's Day. And th- but I want to give us two. I want to give us two things to consider for you to appreciate about your mama, no matter where they are, who they are. Number one, you can appreciate their efforts. You can appreciate their efforts. Parenting is difficult. It's consuming. It's demanding. Anybody want to give me an amen on that? Anybody? (laughs) Amen. Amen. It is, right? Here's a question. Have you ever thought how much easier your parents' life would have been if they hadn't had you? Really? It would have been a whole lot easier. I grew up in central Pennsylvania in dairy farming country nestled in the Appalachian Mountains. And I remember as a young boy chopping down my first tree and seeing firsthand rings on trees and kind of learning that, you know, trees grow by adding a ring every year. In good years, you know, the easy years, the rings are thicker, the tree grows more. In more tough years, lean years, those rings are very, very narrow sometimes. And you can kind of count how old a tree is by counting up the rings roughly, you know. And uh, it, it, I remember my dad teaching me that and seeing that for the first time. But I think if you could look at the years of crisis in my life and my mom's life, I think you could tell the age of my mom by something different, by the number of gray hairs that she has now. I remember when she was called to school because I had a playground accident that busted my lip open and I had to get like nine stitches right here on my lip. You still see the scar whenever you're up close to me right there. That gave her some gray hairs. I remember when she was mowing the lawn and I was riding lawnmower and I was riding my dirt bike on a lane right adjacent to where she was mowing. I wrecked my dirt bike and she had to come out and, and gather me up as, as I had lacerated 20 stitches in my ankle. My bl- shoe was filled with blood. She, kinda had, she had to pick me up and take me to the hospital. That gave her a few gray hairs. I remember my friends next door, who were a little bit older than me, taught me how to use six tin soda cans strung together and lighter fluid and matches to make what we affectionately called our six-foot cannon. That thing worked like crazy. I need to build one of those again. That was awesome. <laughs> And then there's this whole side of her head that was just all the girls I brought home and my dating life and all that. I'm like, man, and that's just the tip, right? All of us, just the tip of the iceberg for the stresses we put in our mom's lives. So let me ask you this question then. When was the last time you thanked your parents for putting up with you? I mean, who else would have? (laughs) When you were that snotty brat, right, you know, they, she's kept giving you food and a place to sleep and a place of safety. And so we just need to appreciate our parents' efforts. And, and, and honestly, I mean, just write some things down today before you call your mom, if you haven't already, and just appreciate her effort. 
Another thing we can appreciate is their sacrifice, right? We need to appreciate their sacrifice. Parenting's expensive. Can I get an amen on that one too? <laughs> okay, it's expensive. This week I actually did a little research and I found out 2016, today's economy, to raise a child to 18 years of age. That's just to 18, not college. The average cost for raising a child in America, $245,000. And that doesn't include when they come back home. I mean, that cost is incalculable, right? I mean, it's, it's expensive to raise children. And, and so, so, so when couples choose to have a kid or a child, they're really making an unselfish decision, right? I mean, they're spending money on someone else, and they could have been spending it on themselves. I've talked to a few, maybe you have talked to some couples who decide, hey, I don't, I don't want to have kids because, and, and it's basically a material decision. My career is more important. I like nicer things. That's more important, and I want to keep all that to myself. I just don't want to have kids. But when you become a parent, it really is an unselfish decision because you're going to put up with a lot of grief. It's going to cost you a lot of money. And we know there are great rewards that come on later on down the road, but, I mean, think about this. What could your parents have afforded if they hadn't had you? I mean, if there were five in your family, I mean, that's 1.2. $1.2 million. I mean, I mean, what kind of house or car or vacation could they have taken? I mean, come on. But instead, they chose to have you. And all that money they could have spent on themselves, they spent it on, you know, school or braces or food or doctors or whatever, right? As one comedian joked years ago, in my book, the definition of a parent is someone who has photos where they used to have money. Some truth in that. <laughs> Photos are on our phone now, but yeah, you know. Proverbs 23, 25. Give your parents joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. Wow. You know, sadly, in Western culture, the culture that we live in, it's the only culture on the planet where, as, sort of as a whole, we don't respect our elders. You know, in many other cultures around the world, Asian culture, Middle Eastern culture, African culture, the older you get, the more respected you are, the more venerated, the more lifted up that you are. Yeah, people value your wisdom. They look, they treasure who you are. But it, it seems to be, for whatever reason, only in Western culture do we seem to put the greatest emphasis on the younger people, right? You know, and where is that taking our culture in some ways? Well, in some ways, not exactly in wise directions, right? One way in the church that we can take a stand against this current culture is to really esteem and, and listen to and appoint just even elders uh, in the church, right? And uh, along with what was already announced about next week, this is a little side note, but I'm excited to announce that we're going to begin a new round of elder nominations next week as we look to expand our elder team in here because we really believe as a church that, that we got to do what God says and really look up to and value and esteem our elders, not just kind of put all our attention somewhere else. And so be thinking about who you may want to nominate to serve as a possible elder here in the Denver church, and we'll talk more about that next week. But the Bible says very clearly that we're to value, that we're to treasure, that you're to esteem, not just church elders, but all of those who are elders among us, all those who are older in life and in the faith, the elderly, in particular your mom and your dad. This, the problem today in America for many older adults is that the older they get, the less respect they get. And I'm realizing this even for my own mom. My dad passed away six and a half years ago. And my mom's been living as a widow. She's now 85 years old. And, and what I see her going through right now is, is that all of her friends who were her support network, they're dying. And they're like gone. In the, in the marketplace, um, you know, like basically, what are the things that are being developed and sold to them to really support them later on? The marketplace doesn't even really support them. They, they don't have a use for it. They, companies aren't going to make a lot of money in, in, in taking care of them. And their grown kids are busy taking care of their kids. And our older and aging parents and moms can feel like a fifth wheel, just a little bit left out in life. And I'm, I'm just seeing this in my own relationship with my mom. And I want to say all this to you as I've begun to see this. If your parents are still living today, they have an intense need, an intense need to know that they've made an impact in your life. And you need to express that appreciation to them on a regular basis. You need to affirm them on a regular 
basis. Well, how do I do that, you might ask. You know, how do I affirm them? I, you know, my, one of the simplest ways that I do that, I'll encourage you, is to stay in touch. Stay in touch regularly. It says you matter to me. Honor just means I recognize the significance of, so I'm just going to stay in touch. Anytime you just call your mom or your dad, you're honoring them. My mom, it's on my phone every Saturday. Bam, that's talk time with mama. It's just in there. Anytime you write an email, if, if they're on email, maybe they aren't because they're older and that's not their thing, or send a card or send gifts. My, my wife is phenomenal at that, not only with her mom, but with her mother-in-law, with my mom. Just, I'm thinking of you. I thought of this. You, you're, you're not irrelevant anymore. Somebody out there still cares for you. When you, when you talk, and when you talk to them, talk about the details of their lives. You know, for some of our older parents, their lives aren't that complicated anymore. It's kind of simple. And, and, there's the, and they would love to, to have the phone or the email or the visit filled with this, catch me up on life. What all's going on with the kids? What's going on with you? What's going on with work? What's going on with your life? He's like, man, I, I, I tell everybody that, whatever. Do you want? Yes, they want to hear that because it matters to them. And sometimes for my mom, I, I mean, she's definitely slowed down later on in life, but I can get on the phone with my mama and she can talk for an hour about what's going on in her life before I even get my first sentence in. Because she has a lot she wants to share about what's going on. This with the grandkids, this with my sister, this with her. I went to this doctor's appointment, and then I went to that doctor's appointment, and then I went to that doctor, and then I got my dentures, and then I got, I mean, I just, okay, mom, to bring it all, give it all to me. I want to hear about it all. So, we, so as an adult, we honor our parents by appreciating them, but we also honor them by providing for them. You know, as time rolls on, a roles kind of, that were separate, kind of become similar, and then kind of reverse. As your parents age, there are more and more ways you start taking care of them. And that's just natural. It's just it's normal. They took care of you early in life, and then later in life, you take care of them. It's just natural and normal. Many of us here are moving into or have moved into that stage. It's because parents are living longer. People are living longer these days. And many of us, we're kind of caught in the, in the sandwich generation, right, where we still have little kids that are dependent upon us, and, uh, you know, or young adults, and they're dependent on us. But now we're having aged parents that are having more and more demands on our lives, right? And more needs. And we get sandwiched in, in the middle. Um, even now, you know, my parents used to come, like when I lived in an apartment, even as a young adult, even in graduate school, and they would clean my apartment for me. I'm like, I didn't even want to clean the apartment because it was, it was nasty. I mean, like, <laughs> you want to cut, really? You know, and so, but those, in, our, in my family, those roles have reversed. You know, now I plan several trips home a year, and mom just has her honey-do list, and I just work for three or four days. Okay, what needs done? Because her love language is just acts of service. Those roles have kind of shifted, right? You know, my sister lives nearby, so, she, so I have a sibling, and, you know, honestly, the bulk of the day-to-day -day responsibility falls on her, and there are times, to be honest, I feel quite guilty about that, that I can't be there to do more physically. And so, uh, um, you know, one of the things we did in that regard is we, we finished our basement so that mom could come if she would ever want to relocate there, sell her home and all the responsibilities with that, or just come for a couple months at a time and give my sister a break, right? You know, like just from her day in, day out care of my mom in that way. You know, the Bible says here, 1 Timothy 5, in some cases, elderly women, their husband has died or they're on their own and they don't have children provide for them. Well, what happens in that scenario? It says this, it says, treat the older women as you would your own mother, and treat the younger women as your own sisters. You know, it, it says basically, look around the room, any older women, treat them as you would treat your mother. And treat the younger women, this is in the church family, as your sisters. You know, for me, here in the church, I feel like I have, you know, several hundred sisters, right? Lots of spiritual sisters. I don't have very many spiritual mothers here, because I haven't found too many women admitting that they're the older woman in this passage, Okay. <laughs> So that 85-year-old sister, you know, amen, woo, you know. But we got to be okay just to know, mom, mom, mom. The church should care for any widow who has no one else to care for her. That's what the church does. But if she has children or grandchildren, their first responsibility, their first responsibility is to show godliness. I mean, how, how do you be godly? How do you be a, a godly woman or a godly man and taking care of your parents? The first responsibility is to show godliness Show godliness not at work, not at church, but you show it at home to your mama. And you repay them by taking care of them. 
This is something that pleases God. So important, he put it, God put it right up there in the Big Ten, right? Right up there with don't murder, don't commit adultery. He says take care of your parents, you honor them. And, that, and that's part of it. And there are so many examples in this room of brothers and sisters who are sons and daughters who've taken on the role of providing for their parents or their in-laws. They made a promise to them, we're going to take care of you in your old age. We're going to provide for your needs because we know it pleases God. Even Jesus on the cross, right, took care of his aging mom. As he looked to John, John, behold your mother, and mom, behold your son. He wanted to make sure that mom was taken care of. Jesus only said seven things on the cross. That was one of them. That was one. The Bible doesn't mince words about this. 1 Timothy 5.8, if anyone doesn't take care of his own family, especially his immediate family, he has denied the Christian faith, faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's pretty strong words. The fact is this. You honor God when you honor the parents he used to create you. Whether they were good, bad, or indifferent, they had the DNA needed to make you. It doesn't take a lot of money to honor your mom and dad, although I think you should set aside, and we've set aside money in my family. If my mom can't take care of some of her financial needs, we have some financial means to help take care of those needs for her. And I would encourage you to consider doing that if you haven't. But it doesn't take a lot of money to honor your father and mother. It just takes a lot of love, and that's free, and that's a choice you can make. Sometimes love is spelled T-I-M-E. I mean, for 20 years, I haven't needed to buy my mom anything. She's like, I already got what I need. I don't, she doesn't need things. She needs time. She needs appreciation. I want to close by saying a special word to those of you who have parents or maybe a grandparent or guardian, somebody who raised you, who hurt you deeply. And I, I chose to talk about this as we wrap up because I've recently been studying the Bible with a few people and counseling several people who've been in this situation. And I've seen the, the, the tremendous impact and difficulties arising from that. If that's you, I'm sorry that that was your experience. Maybe they hurt you physically. Maybe it started with alcohol and they were rational at times. Maybe they hurt you emotionally. Maybe they hurt you even sexually. You know, the Bible promises severe judgment on child abuse and child neglect. In fact, Jesus said this, one of the strongest things he ever said. It would be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and dropped into the ocean than hurt a little child. It's that serious. So, what does God expect of you if you were somebody who was hurt by their parents? Well, I can tell you these few things. He's not asking you to deny it. He's not asking you to repress it. Certainly not asking you to excuse it. He's not asking you to ignore it or slough it off as not important. God doesn't want you to fake it, but I believe he does want you to face it so you can get on with your life. I'm sure in a crowd this size that there are more than one who are carrying a large, large amount of unfinished business with mom or dad. And if you're carrying it, you're probably still reacting to some of that hurt. And you're probably taking it out either on your spouse or your kids. And that's not fair because it wasn't their fault. But because you haven't dealt with it, you haven't talked it out with God, and you're going to take it out on the people around you. If you're still angry at your parent over something they did years ago, something they said, we know up here that's dumb, right? Because we're still letting them control us today. And some of them have died, and they're still controlling you in the grave. You need to be able to release that anger because eventually it will eat you up and it will ruin, ruin your relationships. It's got to be expressed. It's got to be, expre it's got to be brought into the light. And what I'm talking about in this is, is a very courageous thing to do this. It takes great courage to make peace with your parents. But you've got to stop running. And you've got to stop hiding. And you've got to stop blaming. And you've got to stop excusing. You've got to face the issues. You've got to be honest. And for some of us, honoring your parents is going to come by you being honest with them. Maybe you would go to them if this applies to you and say something like, hey, mom or dad, I want to be free to honor all the good that you did in my life, but I can't until I deal with the pain. 
you talk about the pain, things you still feel, whatever kind of comes to mind or whatever. And, and I want to forge a new relationship with you, Mom. I want to forge a new relationship with you, Dad. I want to face these issues. Let's talk. And if there are wrongs to be made, right, do it. And do it before it's too late. If you can't talk to your parents, maybe they've passed away or there's no way that they even want to talk to or listen to you, then I just encourage you, express that in a setting with maybe a Christian counselor so you can get it off your chest, get on with your life. And I'm just, I'm begging you as your minister who loves you to stop this cycle of pain that gets transferred on because it will perpetuate to the next generation. The truth will set you free. Only God knows how much you've been hurt. But God has the power to heal that hurt. And it starts by facing it and not faking it. Lastly, someone, uh, some of you may have been uh, abandoned by your mom or abandoned by your dad or both. And you, in your case, this scripture applies to you. My father and my mother may abandon me, but the Lord will take care of me. If that's your case, I want you to know that you have a heavenly father that will never use you, will never abuse you. Will never lose you, never leave you, never depart from you, never abandon you, and you can turn to him at any time. Hopefully these thoughts today have helped encourage you, spur you, moved you to better honor uh, your mom. And uh, at this time before we sing a closing song, I want to say a special prayer. And so if you would, please join me uh, in this prayer on Mother's Day. And again, thank you so much for visiting with us today. But let's bow um, at this moment uh, and pray. Well, Father, uh, we know that none of us have had perfect moms or dads, but today in this Mother's Day, Father, we honor them because you use them to create us. And Father, we know our moms went through pain, they went through labor, and we're here because of that, and we're grateful for that, God. We want to honor many and all the kinds of mothers who today are visiting with us. Jesus, you're the one who gave us an instruction to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice and so. We want to take a moment to do that in this prayer. Father, for many, uh, Mother's Day is a difficult day. And so we ask you, Father, to comfort those who have heartaches today. For those who've lost their mothers, comfort them. Or for moms who lost a child through miscarriage or death, please comfort them. We pray for stepmoms who are just struggling with blending a family. Father, we pray for those who've had a delayed adoption or even a failed adoption and their heart's been broken. Father, we pray for moms who have broken relationships with, with their children, for those who've maybe been hurt by a child deeply. Father, comfort these moms. Comfort those who want to be mothers and it's not happened. Comfort those who may be struggling with infertility. Father, we ask that you'd wrap your arms around them and just give them your presence today. Father, at the same time, you said rejoice with those who rejoice. And so, Father, we want to celebrate here at the end of our Mother's Day service with other mothers here today, Father, with those who've given birth this year to a brand new baby, God, thank you for the joy of new life. I pray those moms can get some sleep. <laughs> Father, we celebrate with you those who've adopted children in the home, who've graciously and warmly fostered kids in a loving home. God, thank you for those women. Father, we thank you for the grandmas and grandmothers who've welcomed grandbabies this year. Praise God for the next generation. And Father, we thank you for the women in our church who serve as spiritual moms to teens in our junior and senior high ministry and for the mentoring that moms give to other moms, older to younger. God, we celebrate these women. God, we celebrate the women who are carrying babies right now. We ask that they have healthy pregnancies and safe deliveries. Father, we thank you for our moms at every stage of life. We thank you for the mothers of preschoolers whose work never seems to be finished. We thank you for the moms of grade schoolers who play chauffeur and pack lunches and help out with homework every day. God, we thank you for all the moms of middle schoolers and high schoolers just navigating a more complicated yet more rewarding stage of life. Father, we thank you for the moms who feel pride and faith of being in the empty nest stage. And we thank you for the moms and grandmoms who pray for their families. So, Father, on this Mother's Day, we commit ourselves to honoring and to loving and protecting our mothers both in our lives and in our church family. We thank you for the gift they are. We pray your blessing on them every day. In the merciful name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing a final song. Happy Mother's Day.